Welcome to the Bench Podcast with Jenna and John. Welcome back to John Wilkin. He missed Thank last you. week, but I would just like to give a good shout out to our stand-in guest, Carl Amor. He oh, was a I great, great fill-in right. for you. Time. And I just, I mean, I don't like doing this, but I will do it because he kind of oh, he's deserves been it. Out again, he's been he? caught. He's been telling Porkies. So the if first you Porky listened, he told was about the team song, and we found video evidence of him actually joining in with the team song, leading it. Mm. So it starts with that. He was banging is, the drum. This is another Porky. So he told us on last week's podcast that he doesn't really drink between Monday and Wednesday. Well, we filmed the episode of the bench on a Wednesday, and I can tell you. And in fact, I'm going to see. I'm going to do my very best to get this picture that he sent me uh, downloaded onto this podcast, vodcast, whatever you want to call it. But Carl Amor is a fibber. He, he a, is a liar. He, a he should be ashamed of himself. He had a beer himself. in his hand 40 minutes after the podcast. He's, he, what did he say? I only ever drink on a Wednesday if there's a real big reason no, for, for it. No, for a special occasion. <laughs> a special well, occasion. Carl Amor waiting for a train is, not special, is, is a special occasion. No, just kidding. I mean, I'm not kidding. It's a true story. We will show you the photo proof. But yeah, um, welcome to another episode of The Bench. We have a special guest. Very special guest. This week, second appearance on the podcast, The Bench. And what timing, what timing, what, what timing what? it is. <laughs> just just for fun. I mean, look, the thing is, this isn't live. Everyone knows podcasts aren't recorded live. This is being recorded on a Thursday. It's going to go out on a Monday. A lot could happen in the space of... A few days. So you're going to do two introductions. Let's do two. So, ladies and gentlemen, children, friends of the podcast, pets, whoever you are. Pets. Yeah, pets. Pets. Pets are the biggest <laughs> things. <laughs> no. Paul Rowley, the Salford Red Devils head coach, welcome to the bench. Thank you very much. Just wait a second. Pause, pause, pause. Edit, edit, edit. Okay, John, you can do the second one. Uh, Paul Rowley, delighted to be joined by the new Leeds Rhinos head coach. <laughs> How exciting. No comment. <laughs> no, you can't, no comment. Straight back. Straight, he said he's got his cricket pads on oh, ready. Can Is we it? just also show a shot? Actually, feet up to his... He looks extremely smart, dressed, I'd say, yeah. straight, cut, like maybe you, from an interview. I don't know, have you had an interview heading me today and you come straight on set? You come straight Show in. respect. It's, I'm at Castleford. I'm, uh, I'm going to be in the company of two great teams and, and yourself, so why not? <laughs> Excellent. You, you do look sharp, though. Thanks, Always. John. Is it you make an effort to look sharp? It's not an accident, is it? Like you didn't just wake up and then thought, you know what, I'm gonna I'm put one this extreme crisp. to the other. All right, I'm you're either up there or down there, so uh, a bum yeah. or smart. Yeah, there's <laughs> another saying, but I don't want to swear <laughs> on TV. So yeah, I try and make an effort, but uh, yeah, I like to look smart, and then uh, smart. you know you generally uh, maybe act a little bit smarter as well. So it might might keep me on the straight and narrow. I, I think th I think we can jump forward to the to the fitness chat. We were chatting about. Well, Paul. can we not just circle back to the Leeds Rhinos and see if we can get anything? Should, yeah. Like, I mean, are you going to be the next head coach of Leeds Rhinos? It's a hypothetical question, Jenna. Because what do you mean you, could, you could ask me that about any club in the in the country. So I've had no contact with Leeds Rhinos. I'm preparing You've not spoken to Ian Blees. Hang on. When you say the Leeds <laughs> Rhinos, do you You've actually not mean? You've spoken to Ian Blees. I've speak to Ian Blees if I see him in the pub and he's, he, well, he says go and get me a, a pint or something like that. <laughs> Have you seen uh, him in the not, pub not. in the last <laughs> couple of hours? Don't put me in the same category as Kyle or... <laughs> He's good, yeah. No, you don't want to be that bad. <laughs> but it is a all. Thursday, so it's safe to drink on a Thursday. <laughs> Kyle's so, on it now. Yeah, exactly. Kyle's about 10 pints in now watching England. So nothing? No, absolutely not. And to be fair, they've got a big week ahead, haven't they? You know that, for all the yeah, reasons. Yeah. As yeah. We already know, so I'm not going to go into that. But they've got a big week, and, and I've got a big week as well. So yeah. um, That was rehearsed. You've been practising that. I haven't. Car, I haven't. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the truth, and that's the facts. And I like to stick to the facts, not the yeah. hypothetical, uh, hypothetical stuff. Is it a fact that Ian Bleese was involved in your contract negotiation and signing at Salford? Yes. Yeah. That's a fact. So it'd be safe to assume that Ian Bleese knows the ins and outs of your contractual obligations with Salford very closely. Absolutely. Yeah. John, no further you, questions, John. No further questions, John. Wow, that was impressive. <laughs> yeah, thank okay. you. What do, you mean, do you, mean, you mean that was impressive? Yeah. Just the line of... I mean, it was, uh, for, like, if I'm going to give you any feedback, it was a little bit aggressive. You kind of All just, right, like... sorry. It was quite... Flat, so like, it wasn't meant to be, but, Paul, yeah. Paul. I just thought if... Right, and this is taking Paul out of it. I understand. He, 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 you know, he can't no. say anything. And he's, look committed to Salford is shown his dedication and loyalty to Leeds Salford so that's never cool, in, it's a cool it's never stadium in question. though isn't it Headingley's never, an amazing stadium <laughs> you can't question Paul's loyalty my, my point was Ian Bleece if there was a way out of a contract he might be the man who knew how to do that that's all I'm saying 
Well, he is the sporting Clauses. director, the new sporting director at Leeds Rhinos. Um, look, time will tell. Hopefully this podcast ages well. Um, but... In all seriousness, welcome to the bench. This yeah. is it now. We're not going to do any more. No, no, that's, that's it. That was just a bit of fun. Bit I of, you know. Um, <laughs> just a <laughs> I hope you brought it another, another top to change into before you go yeah. on set. <laughs> um, so you've been well? Busy? Uh, obviously busy with uh, with Salford and the lads. So uh, and, and got another big game this week. But it's been great, yeah. Salford have been doing very well. So well. Mm. Like really well. We was good last week, for sure, against Warrington. Um, and, and obviously we've got another test this week against St. Helens. So, um, but we're always confident. You've had me on before. I always say we're confident. We have belief, uh, and, and we're a good group, and all that. You, you've heard me say all them yeah. things before. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but but we can back it up. And I think I think teams, I think we make teams a little bit nervous. If I'm honest, it's obviously again fact that we have no resources and yeah. that we spend less than everybody else but ultimately there's a 17 lads on that field and there's some pretty talented individuals who are all ranking in the top five in stats yeah. for example yeah, and yeah. two in the man of steel top five at the minute so we're we're doing Incredible. all right as a head coach though would you like to have resources yeah but would you be able what would you do if you had resources <laughs> Do you know if you did have resources though? You've been that used to, you've been in the trenches well, now for some time, haven't you? If I had resources, then you could have added to the team that we've already got Tyler, Brody, Akers, put Ken Seo back in, maybe Budgie back in. Then there's a fair old squad there, as, you know, because we've got a good team and that'd be a good squad. So resources makes a good squad, I feel. Uh, you can still build a good team without resources, but a good squad needs resources. Because, you, like I said, you've been used to running on bare bones for some time now. So does it almost feel normal to, to not have that yeah. at your disposal? Yeah, and probably in a, a little bit of a twisted way, probably thrive on it as yeah. well a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And you know that I, I, I run the narrative that I do, but again, it's based on facts, so yeah. I'm entitled to do so. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, it's it, obviously we, we'd, we'd like to have the, the, the resource that, that others have. And, and, and I'd like that for, for my players as well to... To give them what they deserve. So, but what I will say is, we've got a very durable set of players, thankfully, and touch wood, because I think we've got about, I think we're the, the team with the most uh, players that have played every single game so far in Super League. I'm sure we've got about six players in our team, which is remarkable. Um, however, with the, uh, uh, what I do feel for the back end of the season, with the head injury thing, you can only play so many minutes. Yep. It'd be quite interesting if we did get. Uh, to where we want to be. What, and you're going to have to stand players down because of how many minutes they've played? Well, I'm, I'm throwing you straight off on a different subject ah. here and it's a healthy one because the facts would remain that the ever-presence would have got to yeah. the... The the limit. It's something yeah, that we haven't spoken a lot about. God, no, that. Yeah, that's crazy that you'd have to voluntarily yeah. stand players down mm. in well, with a small wow. squad as well. That's the rules, so... Wow. Uh, that, that's, you, you know, you're talking, that big game, you're talking though? big players... So are you for me? Are yeah. You, are you starting to think about that now? Well, it's already in there. Yeah. I've just brought it up. So, yeah. um, so how, how do you act on that? Like, it's... I, I, I can't. I've you got to rest and rotate. Can't yeah, we? we're we we're, we're that team that are in a eight hundred meter race and we're sprinting right from the beginning. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, and we and we just go as far as we can for as long as we can, uh, and that's how it works. And who are we talking about then, Sneed? I'm pretty sure Sneedy. Uh, I'm, oh God, I think Tim. La I'm not sure if Tim, Tim Lafay. Uh, maybe Nanny. So just your best players then. Nanny, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, just all our oh, best yeah. players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. lads. Some you can't play. And you can't play in the grand final. Two on the Man of Steel leaderboard. They, yeah. they two, aren't they? Mark Sneed, Nanny McDonald. Nanny. Yeah, yeah I'm. I, I'm pretty sure Nanny's made every one. If not, he's missed one. There's yeah. a, there'll be a lot who've yeah, missed yeah. one and one only. So there'll be uh, the glass will be filling definitely. So this could be an interest. I mean, it's hard. Like you, you do understand why they're doing it. Obviously, player welfare, player safety, all of that. But this could be a potential, like on and off in the next few episodes. I don't know. Do you do you touch it? Like it's a hard one, isn't it? Concussion. It's a serious. Um, yeah. I, I, well, I went to the body. the head injury. Um, they had a media briefing at the start of the year, and I went to that, and they showed a graph of number of games played, and then there was this basically dots on the graph and at the top it was players who played in the middle of the field for long minutes of the highest risk players of all time mm. and I was thinking looking at this, these dots in the top corner I was thinking that was me mm. <laughs> that was well, loose forwards loose forwards is, yeah I mean, uh, I mean exactly. he's missed a few but uh, he still plays yeah. he plays 80 minutes regular Shane Wright as a middle yeah. plays I think he did 
next 65, 70 minutes against Warrington. Same yeah. again week before. I, I thought it was those sorts of players that would be most at risk, you know, like your Ollie mm. Partington's who, who play big minutes, 45, 50 tackles a game, 15 carries a game. You know, all of that workload. Yeah, it's I the thought, collisions, isn't it, in your yeah. data and stuff, the gun shield data. You know, Sneedy's got a dinner suit on, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah. He doesn't need a rest. He doesn't need a rest. Oh, you don't realise sure, the whiplash yeah. he gets on them yeah. drop goals and stuff. And <laughs> 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 he's kicking when he, when he really lets his right boot go. Exactly. It's with whiplash effect. How do, what's the players' views on it? So, obviously, as, as a coach who wants success, you, you know, you've, you've got an issue with it. But in, when it comes to players, like, are they... Are they on your side? Do they understand? Do they want a break? What's what's their no. stance? No, and John will tell you, no. y y nobody wants a break. No. And, and the, if a coach comes and says, uh, you know, we're giving you a rest, then nobody's going, oh, thanks, Jeff. Oh, absolutely yeah. understand. It's yeah. it's gutting, you know. You might as well drop a player. And but... how do you choose when you rest them? Do you rest them against a team that you know you, you, you should beat it, so it's a winnable game, or do you rest them against, like, a St Helens where a lot of people are going to yeah. assume that you can't win that game, which I'm not assuming that at all, especially after your performance against I, Warrington last yeah, week. Yeah, I can't but, remember the last time I rested a player. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'll, if there's a player 50-50, I'll take a sensible decision. Look, there's a bit left in this season for us. That, look, yeah. I'm not risking you or anything like that, but uh, rotation and, and rest is, is, is a very rare thing within our club, so... Uh, that'd be a different thing. But I'd, I, I actually don't think it's on the radar of the players at all. I, yeah. I think, like you no, said, John, yeah, at the beginning of the year, it will mention. It, yeah. And like you, you know, you, you, we've just spoke about it and, you, and it's it's rejigged your memory. Yeah, gosh. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember it now. OK, nobody's, yeah. nobody's brought this up. Yeah. But, uh, maybe It needs looking at that. Because you imagine getting to a big game and then well, if Paul's it's been told by the game. Well, like, if he finishes in the top six or not. Yeah, he's got yeah, he's got to rest people. I think it is crazy. Madness. Mm. Madness. So just going back to like taking on St Helens, you would have obviously played them by the time this goes out. Um, you know, good luck for that mm. game. Congratulations if you won. Commiserations Sorry if, if you, you didn't. Lost. <laughs> but yeah. um, you must go into games like that and just knowing that you can you can win. You don't fear anyone in Super League. Well, for the last two or three years, we we've had good games against St Helens. So I think when you play St Helens, you've got to you've got to be physically ready for that that game because they've been a physical powerhouse haven't they for for a decade they've been the best team in the super league for a decade and so and mentally you've beaten we them, them at st helens already this season well, haven't you? i think we beat them we beat them the other year at home didn't we by yeah. about 40 odd points so yeah. we, we've had good success against st helens with us with a full strength team and without we always have a tough battle uh, and our boys step up because it, it's, it's a simple task if you don't step up physically against st helens you're getting absolutely wasted. Yeah. It's a fact. Yeah. Uh, and so they, they step up. I'm, I'm not saying we dominate, but I'm saying we step up mm. and we've got a team that can score points and, and can play football. Uh, so we, if, we, if, we're, if we stand up to St. Helens, then, then we give ourselves a chance and we look forward to this game. Yeah. We really do. do. Does it take much for you to convince your players? Like, you've clearly got belief, mm. like, and, and it sort of comes out of you, that belief. Do, do, yeah. Is the players in your team that you need to get up to that level uh, that need need to believe or, or is it just you know because you, so. we sort of talk about clubs and go well Salford yeah. Salford just you know they believe they can win games mm. and and I, I sometimes look at your squad and I think well how have you managed to do that because yeah. naturally you know you would there's some people who, who go into games and doubt themselves or doubt the quality or not or have you just you've 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 absolutely well might, like I think we've got a lot of experience so we're we're, we're an aging team yeah. But with obviously the the plus side is experience and a lot of uh, grand final wins in there with, with Single and Callum and people like that. Sneedy, Landstop Trophy winner twice. So they've been there anyway. They know what it looks like. They know what winning looks like consistently week to week. Uh, and and then and then I think the rest of the players who who don't know what that looks like um, have probably. Uh, looked up to to these teams and, and understood what it feels like and want to be where they've been as well. So that we just meet the challenge and and it's not me that gets them up at all. I, I just think you are modest. No, no, that's no. That's not what they say. No, no, no. It's it's the group. The group just we we have a bit of a a buzz about us. We we enjoy we enjoy coming to training. Everybody enjoys each other company. We're a very honest group with each other. So sometimes that's quite cutting. Um, but more, the the more often it's based on a little bit of humility. Everybody's, uh, you know, we're, we're all down to earth.
but we all have a bit of a laugh, but we're very serious about our trade. And, and, and I always use, and I said in, I speak to Jenna right at the beginning of the season about Nanny McDonald. There's a little bit, little bit of a guilty pleasure mm. of mine. That's what I said. Uh, now, he's a character, uh, and people look at him as a character and think he's a bit of a, a joker. But ultimately, when, when he's switched on, he's, he's studious, he's, mm. he's learning, he's coming to us with stuff. And, and that's all the time. And, and I think we've got a captain in Callum Watkins who, who absolutely sets the, sets the standard of the whole club. The club mm. and us as well. We look up to him. Yeah. Uh, he knows what it looks like. He's had the ups, he's had the downs. So he's not been at one club and won everything all the yeah, time. Yeah. He's had some, some uh, adversity as well. Uh, and he's come through the other side. He's the ultimate pro. Uh, and he's, he's brilliant, you know. It, so, so people like that are, are what makes our yeah, club. Yep. Ab absolutely. It's clear that you love the club, that you love the team. You can just see your face light up when you talk about it. I mean, it would be so hard to leave them, wouldn't it? She's going in. Yeah, she's, she's <laughs> coming back. She said, the Leeds chat's done. And now I, did I mention she's gone. Leeds? You well, mentioned Leeds. Uh, yeah, but you were gonna you were gonna ask, I just you, saw you write Brisbane down a question. Broncos what's your favorite? Yeah, what's, I mean, that was that, yeah. what's your favourite grey animal with horns? Jenna was gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> or what yeah. <laughs> Want you? Yeah, sure. No one in all, in all, in all um, seriousness, though, yeah, it's you, an you like time at the you, club. you like coaching. Yeah. Are you a man that's yeah. motivated to coach for the rest of your life? I, I'm a man that started playing rugby like John to play the game. Yeah, and nothing replaces that. But coaching made for me made it got me to a point where I didn't have to leave the game. Yeah. Um, and so I'm still in it, and it's second to playing. However, the bus, the buzz, uh, and I'll, for me now, it's I, I just it does feel like they're they're all your kids. I get more joy out of their success than my success. Yeah, yeah. I genuinely mean that, and and that's what just makes it good. It's it's, it's rewarding. It's fulfilling, and I think I think as long as it's fulfilling, then mm. then you're inspired and you want to work harder for them. Uh, but I think that we've got that in, throughout the group. And you mm. said, it, you said it'd be an hard team to leave. Well, keep to the facts. Like the yeah. facts are yeah. absolutely that whatever the situation. Absolutely, I, I love that team. Love the yeah. the club and what it's about. Love the the fans. Uh, you know, and I remember the fans when I got there. I got. I, I remember getting a letter off one of the fans. Uh, saying, we're going to start making it known now at games. None of us really wanted you here. <laughs> oh, God, I, I, got, I remember the letter. It was a shocker because we lost it really Wakefield the way. Uh, well, yeah, with a knife, I think, to be honest. He carved it. And, uh, and, and, uh, so I've turned them r around, you yeah. know. So, yeah. But I understand, and I've been around long enough to know, uh, you know, it's ups and downs. You rarely see me on the pitch going clapping the fans, I'm, I think that's the arena for the players and yeah. they should accept that. I, I'm, I'm not with them. I do it every now and again when I feel genuinely I want to go and show some appreciation yeah, for yeah. them. Not for me, for them. Um, do you know what's but, made me think of something then that genuinely made my testicles go inside? <laughs> was was uh, Daryl Powell in a bucket hat at Catalan having selfies. Yeah. Do you know that's not... Yeah, a, you, know, you know, that's... It's just... It, I, I agree with, with Paul. He's... he's it's so up and down yeah. that one thing that strikes me about you is is just a real levelness to you all of the time. Like, even if you're under pressure or under stress, mm. a levelness to you, I'd imagine a realistic approach to feedback to players. Mm. And and that's a relation. You know, that they can trust you to be yeah. as you present. They, you know, they and, know and you what can, I'm going to do. But you them. can crank it up as well, yeah. can't you? Do you still use that? You know, getting... Yeah, animated. yeah, yeah. I, I reckon I've... I've I've gone mad about two or three times in my time, like yeah, yeah. going at them at a, a half time chat, but but yeah, I'll, I'll pick my moments. It's, it's quite it's quite tiring thinking of a theme for a game, mm. you know. But when when we're a team that it's not just structure and process, where you just you just nail your pointers and hit that mm. number, that number, and that number. There's a little bit more to it, so there's a theme every every week if we can. Um, and, and and you know we find different ways to to motivate, even though they're not. We don't have to do that. No, we don't no. start butting each other and stuff like that. Um, but I, th I think the lads know that that I'm about them. And, and what I always find in coaching that you, you always get the opportunity. As much as I would say to a player, trust me. Yeah. They're just words, aren't they? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But you always get over time, and I always say, you'll get you'll get the opportunity. Something will happen where I'll prove that to you that yeah, yeah. you can trust me, and I'll put them 
before myself in a situation. So mm. as long as they're good to me, then I'm good to them. Mm. Yeah. And, 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 I, and that's through. I, I think we've got that at our club. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite unique, I think. Yeah, but, it is. That's really But unique, we're pretty yeah. good. So. so, right, I'm going to put you on the spot. You said you feel as though you, the children, yeah. they're all up for adoption. Who's getting picked? Well, hang on. Before you get well, on to that, yeah. just well, a thought. How can you move off of hang that? Hang on. Well, <laughs> Nene <laughs> McDonald, would, would he be open? Like, he didn't leave on the best of terms. I'm talking yeah. about Lee's Rhinos. Like, would he, uh -huh. is he open to go back? Like, he's one of your favourite players, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. The whole crew, you know, it's like you take you, them all. you've got to take yeah. one, one, one player. You've got to adopt one. Ryan Briley. No, no, easy. can't be him. Why? That's the other one because that's <laughs> the obvious one. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, okay. Um, I, I think I've just waxed lyrical about a, a human being who's a champion, human being, and a champion player. And I think no matter if he's old or not, older. Oh. He's he's the guy that start with him and work around him. So Callum, yeah, Callum Watkins is Absolutely. moving in. Okay. Go <laughs> back. Moving in. He's on rolls his couch yeah, from is. next week. He is. He's a good looking thing <laughs> as well. He's all right. He's yeah, yeah. Bad. Oh, he's one of them. I look good to the side of Callum. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, it's so annoying. He's really good at rugby, <laughs> but he's definitely chiselled. Yeah, death, he is. Isn't he? he is. Yeah. Uh, okay, right. Perfect uh, segue into on and off the bench. Um, yeah. Our segment, I forgot to tip you up on this, but you have been on the podcast before and I know you yeah, are a keen on. listener, uh, viewer, so you'd be well well aware of on and off. On the bench is something you want to see less of in the game. Off is something you want to see more of. Uh, John, just to off. give Rolls some thinking time, off yeah. the bench. O off the bench for me this week is uh, the grand final winner's ring. Okay, or that's a nice... Off, off the bench, because Kyle Amor mentioned yes, it in the podcast last week. last week about all of his rings. He was just banging on about his rings. Four, he? one, he didn't Four. really win, but yeah. yeah. And, and, and it made me think, like, off the bench for me is I want something better. Like, the rings are so <laughs> Like, they are... It's like, if you bought it on a stall on a beach in Benidorm, it'd be sweet. Like, you'd, you understand how cheap and tacky they look. It's just a giant gold S. Who's wearing them? Jamie Jones Buchanan, stop wearing your ring, for starters. Right? Everybody who's got one, never did wear it. Did you ever get one? I did get one, yes. You got one, that's I've right. got one, and I don't know where it is. I have no idea where it is. It's that ugly, I hide it. I would never show anybody it. So what why did, not do something What different? did you get for five losing finals? Did you get anything? <laughs> oh, is, that, this, is this where the bitterness comes oh, from? <laughs> 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 no, you didn't. Yeah, I got losers medals. Okay. I've got them out, actually, at home. Just all my losers okay. medals. All right. So <laughs> in case, it's like Jamie Jones, Buchanan and them have got all these rings and I've just got five lit losers right. medals. Okay. Uh, but yeah, let's change it. Do something different. What about a nice necklace? What about, what about a, watch? a watch? A watch. A watch is a good one, yep. Tissot watch. Man. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, exactly. You used to get watches from Man of the Match. Do something yeah. other than a yeah. really bad looking ring. Kevin Brown once got a watch, I remember, presented by the great Steve O. Good Friday. I remember that. <laughs> um, anyway, no, everybody just... got a watch every week. No, did they? A Man yeah, of the Match got the watch. They? So every I, week. Would, I would be presenting a watch. Yes. If... Yeah. And now what do you do? What do you give them now? I don't give, I give they get a medal. But, but they have they to give return the medal and then they get another one. Isn't that uh, the same medal every week? I think so. I mean, I don't examine it that <laughs> closely. So budget. I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway. Off the bench. Yeah, off the bench. Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, better, something something else. better than a ring. Do you have something off the bench? Something you want to see more of in the game? <sighs> see, you, if you, you want. I'm going tactical now, though. I'm yeah, going. Uh, yeah, it's perfect. Well, last time I was on, I said put the refs in earmuffs, so I can't, yes. I can't go there again. But I would get rid of the downtown rule for a start. Yes. And the try or no try. So give us the downtown. Debacle. Give us the downtown rule. So we're a transition team. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're getting back behind the ball. So they oof the ball 70 metres, and and they're still trudging back, and we make a break on play one because we've been daring enough to have a crack, mm. but they've not got behind the ball, and we can't That's rejoin cool. and support and score a try. Yeah. But what's what is that designed to stop though? It, it, I'll tell you what it stopped. It stopped Ellery Emily and Sean Edwards back in the day when, oh, when Gene Miles and I wrote, the did, did, did wait and go right. Yeah, give yeah. it one of them. So and, you want the downtown rule gone? Yeah, I think it's rubbish. Okay. Yeah, especially okay. on play if you're having yeah. a crack at teams yeah. and then okay. you can't. You're essentially well, it's, attacking with four players out. Yeah, it's counterproductive to what we're trying to produce as a sport, aren't we? We want just, entertainment. Just on that as well. Why are right? This is a, this is dead rugby. Rugby okay. geeking out. Why are why don't teams get behind the ball quick anymore? Why? Well, when I was when yeah. I was playing, play two, I had to be back. I had to be back behind the ball to run a support. Are you sure? Yes, but I had to I had to run support for our back three. Well, I guess it's all about defence, no. isn't it? Yeah, I know. You, I know. Have a rest. Yeah. 
take the get one in before the kick two, if you like. Three. Yeah, play, you've got three three tackles to have a rest and then get involved and then yeah. go and defend. Yeah, right. That's, That's what good. it is, isn't it? Yeah, I might so. might not have always got back. Yeah, too, <laughs> but, <laughs> he's he's sure he says. No, no, sure? we used to get challenged to get back and behind the ball and in shape <laughs> on play two. I'm not saying I did it, oh, so like it. Kyle okay. um, wants to find footage. Well, Tony not... Smith used to say, you run into players off, yeah. then you're back anyway, so run yeah, yeah. players off. There yeah, just go. get back, yeah. Right. Off the bench, Jenna Brooks. Um, so, well, okay, so that was your on the bench. So you want to see, you don't want to see the downtown rule anymore. Oh, my, right, so uh, my off the bench, something you want to see more of in the game, is suspense. And I'm talking about suspense, not necessarily in a game of rugby league, but suspense when it goes to the video ref. We have the video ref talking through exactly what they're looking at, which is great. It works for people who might not be sure. But for people who kind of can um, hear what they're saying, and see, I think that there needs to be like less yeah. of pointing it oh, out and so less. So what you're saying is we understand what the decision is. You know, like if it was yeah. a big screen and it's like, whoa, is it a try? Is it but not? Is it not? Is it, well. is it a try? Is it not? And also, when they're, they're looking at the grounding of the ball, everyone knows when it goes to the grounding of the ball that that's going to be a try because we're looking yeah. at the grounding of the ball. And even when I was in the crowd at the Challenge Cup final, they went to the grounding of the ball and everyone's like, it's a try, it's a try. And it was the double movement for Bevan French. It, it wasn't a try, it was it was a uh, double movement yeah. was given. And I'm like, no, no, I don't think it is. But that's the one occasion where it well, wasn't. They try and they... talk you into it like a Jedi yeah. mind trick, yeah. don't they? Yeah. You can clearly see you now the, the ball is grounded and it's and not. I, yeah. I've categor <laughs> I, I haven't got conclusive proof <laughs> yeah. that this isn't being touched down here <laughs> under law 35AB. I therefore but so what will I be want off the, the bench, try. I want more suspense when it goes upstairs, when you're yeah. watching it at the Less ground. Chat. Yeah. yeah, less chat. Let's oh, have more yeah. suspense. Is it going to be isn't a try? Isn't it weird isn't that going to be a try? Why don't they do that with the yeah. VAR? The VAR yeah. footballs, yeah. mate. Nothing. Why is that not up on yeah. a big screen? Yeah. And because it's suspense. It's because all the fans in the stadium, have been, yeah. the the stadium, have been yeah. at a football game, yeah. VAR's going on, like, what's going on Yeah, but it's exciting. I like it. I like it. I think it's good. Everyone's like, is it going to be given? Isn't it going to be given? Yeah, no, but it should be on the big screen and being rolled through the clips of it so people can see it. Okay, yeah, we're off, not we're not focusing off, on football, so that's an off the bench for football, is yeah, it? Okay, we've fine. switched sports. Yeah, that's that, fine. That, yeah. yeah, it's more so suspense. suspense yeah, in yeah the more video suspense. Referees. So that's off the bench. On the bench for you, John on Wilkins. On the bench for me is the HIA manipulations, oh, tactical manipulations by coaches. When, no, when I didn't, when I said like sulfur. Do you know what he's talking about, Rolls? I know what he's referring to. Mm -hmm. uh, Have I you ever done it? Well, I think we'd win the fair play award. I don't think we do that. <laughs> no. I don't think we I don't think we'd do that. I we can't don't, recall. And we no, don't I, and we don't act injured. No. But I, we're the only team to get a green card. Oh, right okay. in the in the situation that we did the other week when what was Sneedy got green card. Yeah, that was at yeah, Warrington. Yeah, yeah. That was just try. last week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I I just think I can see it. Wigan, it was. I can see it. I, you know who's... It's being done, isn't it? The, manip yeah. the HIA is being used at very smart times in the game to get tired yeah. people off, and also get them to, back on. It really if, it is if, being used. If it is an injury, isn't it also so that they can fail the HIA and then also if they get two failed HIAs, they can bring in the Yeah, I think that's like an extra layer that, to it. But yeah. in, initially what it does is it means you don't use a substitution. Yeah. And, and you freshen up one of your middles. You wouldn't do that, Jenna, because then they're out for the next game. Right, yeah. OK. So... So it, it's passing the but HIA. But if it's a serious injury, if it is a serious injury, not necessarily head, if it's something else, they're going to be out anyway. Well, name names, yeah. Matty Russell, what you're I... talking about. <laughs> OK, what? we're running out of time ah. on that note. Uh, and on the bench for you. So, no, sorry, off the bench for you, Rolls, because right, you've done so on the bench. so I'm not sure what on or off. No, that's fine. Something off, I want. Something you want to something inject you want into more. the game. Right, yeah. bring, bring, take us to Vegas and have, yep. have Magic Weekend Love in it. Vegas Done or something sold. like that. We're, we're partner club with... Uh, West Florida Copheads, so we we are we have an American. So we, I want to get, I want to drive. Having two ex Toronto Wolfpack yeah. people in, yeah. I want to drive because I'm reading now about Roosters partnering up, and I'm thinking we're already doing this, but yeah, obviously yeah. NRL get and it becomes big news. Yeah. We, we, I want to get involved in. I want Super League to get involved over in US. Involved. Can yeah. I get involved? Yeah. I love we'll start with US. Vegas. Yeah. That'd be good. Start with Vegas. Yeah. Start with Vegas. Can you imagine? We'd never I'd get invited back. Yeah. Take all the Super League fans <laughs> to Vegas. What could go wrong? Um, <laughs> Just see a cast Tigers vest like running down the high street. I've, I've never done this before, but on this podcast, I'm going to replicate your off the bench and there I'm going to copy it and I'm going to say, yes, yeah, so two votes. I think you vote three. Three votes. We haven't three never votes. really voted before. Yeah, we're going but to let's Vegas. Vote. Golden vote. buzzer. We're yeah. going to Vegas. Let's do it. <laughs> we are going Done. to Vegas. We all turn. Our chairs turn. <laughs> Referencing before the voice. Before we finish this, can we talk about Paul Rowley's physique and what shape he's in? How old are you? We've only got 30 seconds, so you probably... 15 March. Oh, 49. 
49. Cosmetic enhancements. Absolutely any, not. Any? Not one. Not John one. Wilkin. Come on, John. I'm just I'm asking the question. He's a man's man. man. He is. And he is. what That's a way to him. finish this week's episode. The non cosmetically enhanced the... Paul Rowley, everybody. <laughs> Beef on the bone is that <laughs> one of you. <laughs> you? And on that note, you see the farewell. In <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs>